The Empire's on the run. Alex Jones and the GCN Radio Network. In the near future. When you realize how fake it all is, the football, the basketball. Alert. Security alert. This is Homeland Security. Analysis. Infowars building independent media operations. We've let the worst people get controlled and tell us that we are the ones responsible. Prime Directive discredit Alex Jones. Jones is the wildly popular conspiracy theorist. A popular conspiracy theory talk show called Infowars. Alex Jones is now in an Austin jail. These people are assaulting us. Targeting of patriots engaged. They are never going to stop. They're never going to deviate from their program until we stop them. Block free iPhone app at infowars.com. Block free podcast and video feed. Imperative. Destroy Prison Planet TV. You gotta set your eye on the enemy, not worry about what propaganda they put out intellectually. It's because you can feel it. This is Leanne McAdoo for InfoWarsLife.com. I'm here with Dr. Edward Group, master herbologist and chief formulator behind the InfoWars Life products. Dr. Group, what have you been hearing from women who've started taking super female vitality? You know, we've heard the reviews and feedback from super male vitality from emails to even excited callers on the radio. Now, the answer for women is here. A new formulation specifically designed for the female body, super female vitality, delivers 10 key herbs that work synergistically to revitalize the unique biology of women. I'm so glad that you guys made this for women. When he brought me home the bottle of Super Female, I had tons of energy, tons of motivation, a lot of drive. My husband thinks I've been in a better mood. Our relationship, all I can say is it's a lot better now. I've just started taking Super Female Vitality from InfoWarsLife.com. Supplies are limited, so secure yours today at InfoWarsLife.com, InfoWarsStore.com, or dial 1-888-253-3139. Why does the United States spend the largest percentage of GDP in the world on health care? Why do we have the highest cancer rates on the planet? The highest rates of diabetes, autism, and every other major disease. It all comes down to one thing. We are what we eat. Our food is devoid of nutrition and processed with poisons and additives. Our water is filled with toxic poisons and big pharma runoff. All of this has been engineered by design. We can turn the tide against the eugenicist by giving ourselves the nutrients our body desperately needs. To learn more, visit InfoWarsHealth.com. The site is literally packed with audio and video featuring top health professionals who don't bow down to big pharma. The fight against the new world order starts with you, and you can't stand against the machine if you're sick, tired, and obese. When you visit InfoWarsHealth.com, be sure and check out the catalog with nearly 400 life-changing products. And get free shipping when you sign up for AutoShip. take you live to the Central Texas Command Center and the heart of the resistance. It's Alex Jones. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight. I'm joined in the studio with Anthony Gucciardi and we have on the line Dr. Group and we were talking just before the break about how the government can use the health system to gain control of your life. You know, we've had in the wake of some of these shootings, we've had a lot of conservative commentators say, yeah, you know what we really need, don't take guns away from honest people, but we really need to have heavier screening for people who are crazy or people who are felons. Well, you know what? The way you define those two things is very telling because you can, who, who has a definition for who's insane? I mean, is that going to be the same type of thing we've seen in the Soviet Union where they just merely, one individual asserts that you are uh, have some mental issues, and so now you're you're taken out. We've seen that happen in authoritarian societies before, or even a felony. We've seen people charged with multiple felonies for releasing balloons on a beach because that was a felony offense. That person, when you think of uh, someone with a mental illness, you think of somebody who is very dangerously insane. When you think of a felony, you think of somebody who is criminally dangerous. And yet, those definitions and how they're defined, who defines them, what the process is for defining that is very, very important. And it just shows us how the health system can be used as a control point in our lives, not just for our personal physical health, 
but also for our freedoms. Dr. Group, you were talking about uh, how they would use mental illness to control people. And, of course, we've seen that with uh, Ritalin for many decades in the schools, diagnosing children as having uh, uh, attention disorder and then prescribing massive doses of Ritalin. Right, because it's the easiest way to get into somebody at an early age because mm -hmm. there's no testing involved. They don't have to take blood work or they don't have to do anything like that. They can just rely on what the teacher says. I mean, now they're even talking about doing mandatory psychological testing in schools. They're even doing it right now where uh, students in high school are filling out uh, psychological tests and then they're being referred to psychiatrists to get on some sort of medication. So, you know, in the medical system, the way it was designed initially was they had to go through a process of diagnosis. You had to go through blood tests, urine tests, hair tests. You had to go through a whole list of symptoms and then the doctor would decide by reading those tests or any type of x-rays or any type of scan saying, okay, you fit the, 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 the description for diabetes. You know, you have your glucose levels are off, et cetera, et cetera, over a period of time. But with psychotrophic or psychological or mental illnesses out there, there's no need for that. All someone has to do is go on a recommendation or uh, the parents, which are being manipulated also by other people around, especially teachers, are bringing their kids in and uh, their kids are leaving with some sort of medications. And you want to talk about not only the chemical warfare that's being put upon us, but talking about the, the information, the negative information out there. Well, how does that affect us? Because that's one of the strategies, too. Um, because it creates stress in us. You know, any type of negative news is always going to keep our immune system down because we're gonna be stressed out all the time. They break up the family. So of course that, that causes stress and depression for the children. So you look at the negative emotions, you know, resentment, jealousy, anger in schools that's going on, especially the depression itself, um, the bullying in schools, all that's done by design because they know that they can affect you mentally and then they're gonna have you on prescription medications for all those mental disorders. And it's not just one medication, it's multiple medications. Well, you let know? me ask you a question, Dr. Group. How do people not realize, I mean, you don't need a deep business background to understand when there's a private screening room for your children and they tell them to take birth control and antidepressants, it's like a used car dealership. That you don't need a degree in business to understand that when you go to the doctor's office or when high schools are giving kids uh, tests, psychological testing, and at the same time, the government is funding the studies that show everyone is mentally ill along with the pharmaceutical companies, that maybe something is going on here. And meanwhile, I've spoken to doctor, doctors and I've seen the list. You can lose your license for texting a patient. If you have a patient that comes into your clinic or the hospital or wherever you work, and you have a patient and you text them on your personal cell phone and say something like, hey, hope you're feeling better, you can lose your license for that. But it's okay to privately screen 17-year-old girls or 12-year-olds in California and tell them they need birth control and to be sexually promiscuous and that they need to be you know, injected with a million vaccines and that overall antidepressants are good and they're probably mentally ill without any actual screening. So how, how do people not see that? Because that, that seems pretty obvious to me. It sounds like a really evil used car dealership. And they can't even text the patient, but they can prescribe 17-year-olds antidepressants when they just broke up with their boyfriend or girlfriend and feel a little upset. How does that work? It's, it's, it's the Band-Aid problem that we're dealing with. It's like you have something over here, so you just stick a Band-Aid over it and it fixes it. Parents don't want to deal with situations. They don't want to deal with uh, the right way to deal with a child who is angry or depressed and spend the time. You have the father that's out working all the time now. You have broken families. The mother's, you know, has to have a job too. So there's really no family core values that are left. I mean, there's not people that are sitting around having nice family dinners anymore or spending t a lot of time with their kids and talking to their kids about their problems because it's easier from what they've heard 
you know, it's easy to manipulate the mind if you just tell people what they want to hear, tell people something multiple times, you start believing it. And the constant commercials on TV, the constant media that they're reading, the constant pressure from all their friends, you know, they'll post, oh, my daughter is, is dealing with depression because she broke up with her boyfriend. And then the next thing you know, you have a bunch of their friends on Facebook saying, well, go see my doctor, go see my psychiatrist, you know, he'll take care of it. And you don't have to deal with it. He'll just give her an antidepressant and she'll be fine. They don't care anymore. And it really yeah. shows in who's in charge though, too. Because you have a bunch of weird bureaucrats in charge who are evil and basically making money on all of this. For example, I've read, and I wanted to get into this a little bit, I've read they list about once a month, I think, they send out emails and letters about doctors who've lost their license or have been suspended. And I've read them. Some of them are pretty serious, you know, like major surgical issues or whatever, cut a vein, artery or something horrible. But then I've read, you know, um, gave a patient a hug inappropriately. Hmm. And it's like, what does that mean? You read the description. Oh, the patient felt better after a cold, so the, do uh, the doctor gave the female patient a hug and the female patient felt uncomfortable, so he lost his license. Or um, another one was, I guess this doctor had gone to a restaurant or bar and seen the patient outside of work and said, hey, you know, so-and-so, I hope you're feeling better, how are you doing? And she felt intimidated uh, that he had gone up and talked to her. So they're losing their license for this kind of stuff because of the bureaucracy, mm -hmm. but they're allowed to pretty much get away with anything else. Yeah. I mean, 800,000 people a year die from this. And we're not allowed to know what the history is of a particular doctor or hospital. All that information is, again, kept They can take all the money right. from the drug companies. Mm -hmm. And me and Group have talked before he can uh, highlight this. I've seen doctor's offices with all of the pens and the gifts and everything. They used to just give cars to doctors yeah. to prescribe things. They use women to come in, really attractive uh, saleswomen for drug uh, drug reps. And and Dr. Group shared a story with me. I'd like him to tell about you know how they send in these really attractive drug reps. And they basically... You know, make you sell these drugs, and that's fine, but you can't text a patient. This is how warped the system is. It's totally, totally insane. Uh, Dr. Group, do you want to share a story about how far the drug reps will go? Well, it's all controlled is what it is. I mean, it's breaking out of that control mechanism. I mean, everything is controlled. The doctors are, it's the way they're trained. I mean, they're not trained in the root cause of disease. I mean, I, I know I went through multiple types of training. I spent my whole life trying to figure out how to reverse all this and how to share with people the answers that they need. And one thing nobody talks about is how do you, how do all these chemicals and everything get in the body to start disease? Well, they all flow around in water you know how many doctors have you heard talk about diseases associated with toxic water not many of them because every living substance on the planet including the earth itself is composed of at least 80 percent water if you were to suck all the water out of your body you would just lay flat on the ground and think about all the hundred trillion cells in your body what what makes a cell round what makes a cell round is it's filled with water inside and it's filled with water around the outside. Actually, it's filled with seawater pretty much considering the fact you have a lot of minerals in there. So the mechanism is to contaminate the water. What is air that we breathe? It's mostly water a lot of times. What are the oceans? Water. So they know by contaminating the water and also how do electrical signals transfer in the brain and in the body? If you don't have the proper elect, you know, electrical water system in your body and you throw aluminum into it or mercury into it or any of the other toxic chemicals or metals, then the water is going to be, you're not going to be able to fire those electrical signals properly. So really, if you break it all down and you look at why the, the mechanism that the agenda, the healthcare agenda of, of creating illness and sickness so they can make all the money, it really has to do, if you boil it all down to one thing, is contaminating the water. And that's why they put neurotoxins in the water supply. And that's why they don't want you to have iodine. They took all the iodine out of the salt because it, it neutralizes some of that uh, fluoridation. And that's why they just put all of the garbage now, not just the fluoride. They, they managed to justify that. All of the garbage now just goes straight into the water supply. And he, uh, Dr. Group, you're talking about water on a cellular level, which is so, so specific. If even it's just altered in just a small way, your entire body will suffer and your cells, in many cases, they can die, cellular death, right? 
Yeah, I mean, a good a good researcher in water was Masaru Emoto, and he did studies, and he took a, a, a water droplet should look like a snowflake under a microscope when you freeze it. It should have six sides, and that's a crystal. It's like a semiconductor. A semiconductor is something that, you know, can receive signals and transmit signals, and that's, if you look at the cell, our cells, they're really lined with semiconductors or gates or channels. You know, information can come in and out. And what Masaru Emoto did was he put chemicals in water and took a picture of it and showed that when water was exposed to chemicals, it broke that crystal up and all it, all it looked like was